I only know three things and I've forgotten two of them. So that means that I only know one thing, which is that I've forgotten those first two things. And that is mathematics. Hello everybody, thank you for checking in once again. I just can't seem to help taking photographs and it really is something of a compulsion with me ever since I discovered when I was three years old that my dad had a machine that would make pictures and I love to do it but I really don't know why. So another way of putting that is today I don't know what I'm doing so I'm going to consider what it is I'm doing. I think definitely that's what we're doing and the thing that we're doing is photography which is recording stuff but do you know what the more I do it the more I can't help wondering what it is I'm actually recording and why I'm recording it what is all this what really is going on and what is it that I'm actually doing when I make an image? Right, track my face. Now I know of a gentleman called Slarty Bartfast who said that the chances of finding out what really is going on are so absurdly remote that the only thing to do is to say hang the sense of it all and just keep yourself occupied and he's probably right so I do it with photography and so maybe he was a photographer I think he was probably a film guy I think he probably would have gone for the Nikon FM over the FE I think he was a manual kind of guy certainly not rangefinder maybe in his youth but not anymore he likes to keep up to the minute so a good nick on fm would have been stout and robust enough for him to use up on those glaciers and if you don't know who slarty bartfast is i think you should go and check out norway before all the glaciers finally melt i also know of a lady called susan sontag who said an awful lot of things about photography and one of the things that she said was to take a photograph is to participate in another person's or things mortality vulnerability mutability precisely by slicing out this moment and freezing it all photographs testify to time's relentless melt So we're paying homage to the process of decay that makes the trees grow up all bright in the spring and then come all the leaves come down like they're doing now all brown again in the autumn. Are we paying homage to that cycle of creation and destruction? Are we mourning it? Or are we trying to preserve something? Is there something that we're trying to preserve? I don't know. Sontag also said that photography turns people into objects that can be symbolically possessed. And in terms of street photography, is there something in that? I don't know actually I think there might be what are we doing when we take a street photograph when we see an interesting person or interaction or relationship between people going on why is it that we feel compelled to think to ourselves I will possess that I must possess that image I will make and create and possess that image I don't know but I think 
Sontag might be onto something there. She also said, sanity is a cosy lie, which is probably true, but nothing at all to do with photography. I thought I'd mention it because it was interesting. And our fourth quote from Sontag today. These are, these are fascinating quotes. Time exists in order that everything doesn't happen all at once. And space exists so that it doesn't all happen to you. Which brings me back to the question of what is this thing that I'm photographing? Some holographic thing that's stretched out across the four dimensions so that things can exist and a thing I think is a think a thing is a think which is a symbolic representation in the mind an objectification so by taking a photograph I'm objectifying or representing something that's already been objectified and represented. And where's the sense in that? None that I've ever been able to make out. But then I don't think sense has very much to do with it. There is no sense in it as such. There's purpose in it too, but I don't know what that is. So let's think about realism. There's this idea of realism. Photography is the medium of realism. It captures realism. It's naturalistic. It looks at exactly every detail that's there that you can see with your eyes and reproduces them in exact detail for you with its lens and all its electronics. But what do we mean by reality? What is that? What is, what, 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 what is this thing? What is this all about? It just brings us back to that same point. So if photography is the medium of realism, then I'm not sure what reality is, so I'm not sure what it's representing. Self-expression, to show the audience what we can see, the perception that our own consciousness is able to make. This is what I can see. This is my vision of the world. This is my perception of the world. This is what I find beautiful. This is what I find stunning. And to some extent, aren't I a clever photographer for having captured it? Because there sometimes is a self-congratulatory element to this, and that's probably fair enough. So why am I photographing it? I still don't know. I've often thought that possibly what we're doing when we make an image or art of any kind is to make some sort of metaphor of the experience of being. This is what it's like to be. This is what it's like to perceive. This is what it's like to be aware. This is what it's like to live and to breathe. But why make a metaphor of it? Why not just experience it? Then, of course, we've got the modern media that have grown up with the rise of the in internet, things like Instagram. And I think a lot of that has to do with the cult of personality and celebrity. And it's a little bit like the, you know, the showbiz pages of the old I'll say old newspapers. They do feel kind of old now, the celebrity gossip pages of a newspaper bring you into the unique world of the special people, the, 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 the people that occupy the roles of the gods of Olympus. 
did in the ancient world, the special people, the glorified ones. And photography brings the audience into what we think is direct contact with them. So this is a very curious thing. What's it actually about? I don't know. I think probably it's the thing it's mostly about is increasing the size of the creator's ego, which is fair enough. There's nothing wrong with that if that's what you want to do. If you like your ego and you're proud of it and you want to stroke it, go ahead and stroke it. But the danger is it creates a yearning, a longing, a void in our own beings that doesn't have to be there. On the other hand, of course, sites like that mean that we can upload our work and get it shown to an audience that we never could do before. You know, we couldn't in the days of film. You just simply didn't have that ready audience. Now, there's a ready-made audience of thousands. Whoever's going to look at it, I don't know. There's an awful lot of material out there and the internet's getting very crowded now. But nevertheless, it is a medium. It is. Uh, uh, a sort of a shop window for work that we do that we just didn't used to have in the old days and the days before this incredible digital tech that's come along so very recently. So what can we make of it at the end of all that? Well, <laughs> I just don't know. I only know three things and I've forgotten two of them. So that means that I only know one thing, which is that I've forgotten those first two things. And that is mathematics. I think in the end, I'm with Slarty Bart Fast. Hang the sense of it all and just keep yourself occupied. And one of the ways, like I said, right at the top, one of the ways I love to do that is with photography and I just can't seem to help it whether I've got a film camera with me whether I've got one of my lovely digital mirrorless cameras with me whether I've got my frankly incredible and extraordinary camera phone with me the tech of which is getting better and better and better you know whichever photographic device I've got with me I just can't help taking those images and shooting those images. So if that makes me a show off, then so be it. If that makes me somebody who wants to freeze time, then so be it, like Susan Sontag said. Or if, some, if that makes me somebody who just wants to get on with something and not be bored and make something nice is what it is, then that's good enough for me too. And I hope it's been good enough for you. I'd like to thank everybody who has subscribed to this channel. Thank you very much. Sincerely, that means a great deal to me. Thank you so much for that. Thank you also to patrons who make this channel possible in the form that it is. Thank you for your continued support. Again, a genuine heartfelt thank you to you also. I do hope you've enjoyed this little episode. It's uh, been a slight change from the usual and uh, it's a bit of a change for me and I hope it's just a little bit of a change for you as well. If you'd like to support this channel, if you think, yeah, this old hippie ain't doing too bad a job of things, then you can do that over at www.patreon slash xenography, forward slash, I should have said, xenography. And you can do that for as little as one single of your earth dollars per month. As for me, I think that's it for this week. I will see you next time and if you're not doing anything too involving or irksome or important, please do feel free to join me for a bit more xenography. Cheerio all. <laughs>